All right, welcome to the deep dive. You know how it is. You want to get to the heart of things fast, right? Cut through the noise. Exactly. Cut through all that noise and really understand what's going on. Uh, and today, we're taking a deep dive into something, well, pretty fascinating, actually. You flagged a seminar for us all about using AI to draft patents. Yeah, this is a hot topic. Oh, absolutely. So we've gone through all the materials from this seminar, really tried to wrap our heads around it, and we're going to break down the most important insights for you today. So by the end of this deep dive, you'll not only know what this seminar was about, but also see the potential and hopefully have a few aha moments along the way. Absolutely. And, you know, the materials you shared, it was really a very comprehensive overview of this seminar. And it was led by uh, someone named Bastian Best. He's a patent attorney, but also a computer scientist. So really interesting background. Yeah, that combination is uh, pretty rare, I'd say. Definitely. And what I found interesting is that this seminar was so focused on the practical side of things. It's not just theory. It's about actually using AI in the real world to create patents. And I think that's what makes it so relevant for anyone who works with intellectual property. So no fluff, just really getting into the nuts and bolts. Yeah, practical stuff. And looking at the materials, it seems like this Bastion Best guy, he really structured the seminar in a very methodical way, didn't he? It wasn't just random AI demos thrown together. No, no, definitely not. It followed the actual process of drafting a patent application, like step by step. So they started with the very basics, right? Understanding the invention itself. You have to know what you're dealing with before you can even start thinking about patents. Of course, the foundation. Exactly. And then they went on to uh, creating the claims. And, you know, claims are like the heart of a patent. They define what's actually being protected. Yeah, that's where the legal boundaries are set, right? Exactly. And after that, they covered, well, pretty much everything else you need to know to create a full patent specification. So things like the background information about the invention, summarizing what it does, describing it in detail, and even considerations for including drawings. So the whole package. Yeah. And then, of course, a good chunk of the seminar was dedicated to the AI part itself. Different tools and techniques and how to actually use them effectively. Sounds like a very logical progression. You come away with a complete picture. Yeah. A very structured approach. And it wasn't just about grasping the high-level concepts, right? It was about actually learning practical skills. Yes, definitely. They had two main learning goals. Uh, first, they wanted to give the attendees, most of whom were patent professionals, a solid foundation in AI, make them AI literate, I guess you could say. So understanding what AI can and cannot do in the context of patent work. Exactly. And being able to you know, critically evaluate AI tools and uh, also understanding the security side of things. Which is a huge deal in the legal field. Absolutely. And the second goal was to give them actual you know, hands-on skills for using these AI tools in their everyday work. So they could go back to their offices and actually implement what they learned. Exactly. And tailored to their specific needs and security requirements. I mean, everyone's situation is different. Right. You have to adapt these tools to your own workflow. Absolutely. And you know what I found interesting? They started the seminar with a survey. Oh, yeah. What did that reveal about who's actually interested in this whole AI and patents thing? It was really interesting, actually. Uh, the attendees came from a real mix of backgrounds. You had private practice lawyers from patent law firms, in-house patent attorneys, working for companies, and even people from research institutions. So a good cross-section of the IP world. Yeah, and they asked them about their uh, previous experience with ChatGPT. That's a good benchmark, right? Most people have at least heard of it. Exactly, and also whether they were already using any AI tools in their patent work. What did the responses show? Well, it was quite a spectrum, actually. You had some people who were already heavy AI users, integrating it into their daily tasks. Early adopters. Yeah, then you had some who were just starting to experiment with it, you know, dipping their toes in the water. Testing the waters. Exactly. And then a few who were completely new to it all. But the interesting thing was everyone, even those who were new to AI, had at least heard of ChatGPT. So there's definitely a general awareness of these conversational AI tools. So it's permeating the field, even if people aren't actively using it yet. Absolutely. And a good majority were already using AI in their patent work which shows that this isn't just some future trend, it's happening now. It's the present. Yeah, and this really shows how relevant this seminar is. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned AI pro or just starting out, there's something for everyone. So a diverse crowd, all curious about what AI can bring to the table. All right, let's get into some specifics. One of the things they explored was using AI to create patent claims. Yeah, that's a big one. And they actually started with a pretty naive approach using a general AI model. What happened there? So they took an invention disclosure, which is basically a detailed description of the invention, and they just fed it straight into a general AI, like ChatGPT, and they asked it to draft a patent application. Bold move. Right. And the AI did actually produce something that looked like a patent. It had all the sections, the title, the background, the description, even the claims. So it could mimic the format. 
Yeah, but the problem was it wasn't something you could just use straight away. It needed a lot of revision, human input, you know. So not quite the magic bullet some people might imagine. Exactly. And the key takeaway here was that while these general AIs can produce text that looks like a patent, they don't really understand the deeper principles of patent law. Right, like how to write claims that are both broad enough to protect the invention, but also specific enough to hold up in court. Exactly, what's called claim construction. And they also don't understand the specific requirements of different patent offices around the world. So the nuance is missing. Yeah, and that's where specialized patent drafting tools come in. Right, so the seminar moved on to these specialized tools. What's the advantage of using those compared to just a general AI? Well, these specialized tools are built specifically for patent drafting. They're not just general chatbots that can do a bit of everything. Makes sense. And one important distinction they talked about was uh, the deployment model. So basically, whether the tool is cloud-based or local. Okay, so with cloud-based, your data is processed on someone else's servers, right? Yeah, and that could be convenient, you know, easy to access, potentially more powerful. But then you have to think about data security. Where is your client's confidential information going? It's a valid concern, especially in the legal world. Definitely. And then you have local AI tools where everything happens on your own computer. So more control over your data. Exactly. And the seminar actually mentioned a couple of specific examples of these specialized patent drafting tools like Patent Maker and Rowan Patents. Giving people concrete options to explore. Exactly. And they also did a demo of a research tool that's specifically focused on patent drafting. What did that demonstrate? So this tool, it takes a set of patent claims, and it also takes a prior patent document, basically an existing invention that's relevant to the new one. To see what's already out there. Yeah, and it uses all that to generate a description of the new invention. Oh, that's interesting. So it's not just spitting out text. It's actually trying to connect the dots between the new invention and what already exists. Right, and what's also cool is that it can do some basic checks on the claims to see if they make sense, and then it generates this pretty detailed description that actually relates the claims to the technology in the prior patent. Sounds like it's bringing more of that patent-specific knowledge to the table. Yeah, it's getting more sophisticated. The seminar also explored a more hands-on approach using AI models directly. Can you walk us through that? So this part was all about interacting with the AI, actually giving it instructions. And they used a local AI model for this, which as we said, is great for data security. Keeps everything on your own machine. Exactly, and they focused on crafting these uh, specific instructions called prompts. So it's like telling the AI what you want it to do, right? Yeah, but you have to be very specific. And they even started with a priming prompt, which is basically setting the stage for the AI. Like telling it, okay, you're an experienced patent attorney who specializes in European patent applications. So you're giving it a persona to work with. Exactly. And the idea is that by doing that, you're going to get more focused and relevant responses from the AI. More in line with the kind of expertise you need. Right. And one of the first things they tried was to just give the AI the whole invention disclosure document and ask it to generate a summary. So like a high level overview. Yeah. And what happened was the AI produced information that wasn't even in the original document. They called it a hallucination. A hallucination. Yeah. Basically, the AI just made stuff up. Oh, wow. So it's not as simple as just feeding it information and trusting everything it spits out. Definitely not. You always have to double check, verify everything. AI is wrote predicting the next word in a sequence but it doesn't actually understand facts or truth. A critical reminder, it's a tool, not a replacement for human judgment. Absolutely. And they did have more success when they gave the AI more specific tasks. Okay, like what? So one thing they did was they asked the AI to draft a broad patent claim for a very specific technical concept. And in that case, the AI did a much better job because it had a clearer target. So the more precise your instructions, the better the output. Right. And they also looked at how AI can help with refining the language in claims. Like finding broader or narrower terms. Yeah. So let's say you have a specific term in your claim, right? You can ask the AI to generate a hierarchy of related terms, like starting with very broad terms, then going to more specific ones. An example would be helpful. Sure. So imagine your claim uses the term neural network. You could ask the AI to suggest broader terms that encompass that, like machine learning model. And then you could also ask it to suggest more specific types of neural networks, like recurrent neural network or convolutional neural network. So it's like using the AI to expand your vocabulary and see your invention from different angles. Exactly. And one of the attendees actually said that this was really helpful for them to think outside their usual terminology. And what about phrasing the claims themselves? Can AI help with that? Yeah, they showed how you can ask the AI to generate different ways of phrasing the same claim. Like you could ask for a functional claim, which focuses on what the invention does. Right, the outcome. Exactly. Then you could ask for a structural claim, which describes what the invention is made of. The components. Yeah. And then a method claim, which outlines the steps involved in the invention. So you get a complete picture of how to protect your invention from different legal angles. 
Right. And another attendee mentioned that this helped them identify limitations in their claims that they hadn't thought of before. Really interesting how AI can bring those new perspectives. And finally, they talked about using AI to simulate a patent examiner's scrutiny. Yeah, that was a cool part. The idea is to use the AI to anticipate potential objections that a patent examiner might raise. So it's like a practice run before you actually submit your application. Exactly. And they showed how you can prompt the AI to act as, say, a European Patent Office examiner. And you can ask it to point out any potential issues with the clarity of your claims. And then you can refine your claims based on that feedback. Exactly. So you're more prepared when you actually submit your application. Makes a lot of sense. So we've covered the claims, which are obviously crucial. But what about the other parts of a patent application, like the background, the summary, and the detailed description? Yeah, they cover that too. So for the background section, they emphasize the importance of using very detailed prompts like telling the AI to include things like the field of invention, the problems with existing technology, and the objective of the invention. So setting the stage for your invention. Right, and they showed a good example using Google Gemini, where the AI actually produced a very concise and informative background section based on those instructions. Impressive. They also talked about a more interactive approach where the AI actually has a conversation with you to gather the information for the background. So more collaborative. Yeah, and for the summary section, they focus on using these one-shot instruction prompts. Basically, you give the AI one detailed instruction and it generates the whole summary. And what would that instruction typically include? Well, you would tell the AI to focus on the key aspects of your claims, define any important terms, and explain the advantages of your invention. So it's like a condensed version of your whole patent highlighting the most important points. Exactly. And they also showed how you can use AI to brainstorm the technical effects of your invention. Like what are the specific outcomes or benefits that result from your invention? That could be really helpful for fleshing out the details. Yeah. And one of the attendees said that this helped them articulate the benefits of their invention much more clearly. Now, what about defining technical terms? That can be tricky in patent applications. Yeah, and they mentioned a tool called Perplexity AI, which is really good for that. It gives you definitions of terms, but it also provides citations for the sources. So you can see where the definition is coming from. Exactly, which is really important for accuracy and making sure you're using the correct terminology. Now, patent drawings are a visual element, often very detailed and precise. What role did AI play in that part of the seminar? Well, they did talk about using AI to generate patent drawings, but they were pretty honest about the limitations. The current AI image generation models, they're not quite there yet. They can produce some creative stuff, but it's often not technically accurate or suitable for patent filings. So not replacing human illustrators just yet. No, but they did highlight a more practical use of AI for drawings. They showed how you can use ChatGPT to generate descriptions of existing figures. So you give the AI a diagram, and it can produce a detailed textual explanation of everything in the diagram. So it's like automating the process of writing figure descriptions. Exactly, which can save a lot of time. Now, one of the most important things, especially when you're dealing with confidential information, is security. Oh, absolutely. And the seminar really addressed that head on. They talked about the advantages of using local AI tools like GPT-4, all because all your data stays on your own device. No risk of it leaking out to the cloud. Right. And then they compared the privacy policies of some of the big cloud-based platforms like Google Gemini and ChatGPT. What were the key differences there? Well, one key difference was how they use or don't use user data for training their AI models. Right, because that's a big concern for a lot of people. Definitely, and they pointed out that Google's workspace plan, it explicitly says that your data is not used for training and that no humans are reviewing it. So that offers a pretty strong assurance of privacy. Sounds reassuring. Yeah, and ChatGPT, they do allow you to opt out of having your data used for training. But their policies suggest that human review might still happen in some cases. So there's a bit more ambiguity there. Yeah, and the seminar really emphasized the importance of carefully reviewing the privacy policies of any AI tool you're considering using, especially for confidential work. That's crucial advice. And, you know, I actually prefer to use offline solutions when I'm dealing with client data just to be on the safe side. Yeah, that's a good approach. So looking back at the whole seminar, what's the big takeaway about AI's role in patent drafting right now? I think the main message was that AI is a really powerful assistant for patent drafting, but it's not a replacement for human expertise. A tool, not a takeover. Exactly, and it can help with all sorts of things, from brainstorming ideas and refining claims to generating parts of the patent application. So potentially making the whole process more efficient. Yeah, and maybe even improving the quality of patent applications. But it's still up to the human patent professional to be in control. Absolutely. You have to understand the technology. You have to know how to craft effective prompts. 
and you have to critically evaluate the AI's output. No shortcuts to becoming a good patent attorney. Definitely not, but AI can definitely be a valuable tool in your arsenal. Well, this deep dive has given us a really good overview of what this seminar covered. And you know, if anyone out there is feeling intrigued, wanting to delve even deeper into this whole AI and patent world, there's good news. Oh yeah, what's that? Bastian Best, the guy who led the seminar, he actually runs these sessions regularly. Oh, wow. So people can actually go and learn from him directly. Exactly. If you're looking for that hands-on experience, you can find all the information about upcoming dates and tickets on his website, www.powerclaim.io. Fantastic. So if you're really serious about integrating AI into your patent work, that's the place to go. Absolutely. And as you think about everything we've discussed today, here's a final thought to leave you with. How could you see yourself using these AI tools not just to save time, but also to gain new insights and maybe even strengthen your whole approach to intellectual property? It's a really fascinating area to explore. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. My pleasure.